Good morning. Good to be with you in the Lord's house as we gather here again today. Uh, as we gather today, we want to welcome those folks that are tuning in online. Uh, good morning to you or good afternoon, whatever time you may be watching. Uh, it is good to be with you uh, as we begin today. Let's begin well with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this week now past and for the gifts that you will provide in the coming week. Mercifully bless us with ears to hear, faith to trust in your word is truth, and hearts set upon your gospel above all else. We pray this in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We invite you to please rise as we sing our first hymn, number 477, Alleluia, Alleluia, Hearts to Heaven. Open my lips. Make haste, O oh God, to deliver me. Blessed be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Oh, come, let us worship Him.
Blessed be God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. You may be seated. We turn to the introit for this morning as you see it there. It says, I am the Good Shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He, makes me lie down in green he leads me beside the still waters. He, restores my soul. he leads me in the paths of righteousness. For his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. for you are with me. You prepare a table before me. You anoint my head with oil. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord. Glory be to the Father and to the Son. As it was in the beginning. Amen. We turn now to the readings for this Good Shepherd Sunday. The first reading comes from the second chapter of Acts, beginning with the 42nd verse. They devoted themselves to the apostles, teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. O oh Lord, have mercy on us. The second reading comes from the second chapter of 1 Peter, beginning with the 19th verse. For it is commendable if someone bears up under the pain of unjust suffering, because they are conscious of God. But how is it to your credit if you receive a beating for doing wrong and endure it? But if you suffer for doing good and you endure it, this is commendable before God. To this you are called, because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When they hurled insults at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to who judges justified, justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you were like sheep going astray, but now you have returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. O oh Lord, have mercy on us. We invite you to please rise as we sing our next hymn, Savior Like a Shepherd, lead us. Hymn number 711. <laughs> Thank you. 
Gospel according to St. John, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Please be seated. Very truly, I say to you, Pharisees, anyone who does not enter the sheep gate, the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in some other way, is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he has brought out all those that are his, he goes on ahead, and the sheep follow his because they know his voice. Now, they will not follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from a stranger because they do not recognize the stranger's voice. Now, Jesus used this figure of speech, but the Pharisees did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore, once again, Jesus said, Very truly, I tell you, I am the gate of the sheep. All those who have come before were all thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Anyone who enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. But I have come that they may have life and have it in the full. This is the gospel of our Lord. O oh Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father, through our Lord and our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear friends in Christ Jesus, some of you here will remember a man by the name of Austin Dietrich. Austin served as a Marine in World War II, and he told me one day about the battle at Iwo Jima. Terrible, terrible bloodbath that that was. And he told me that on the third day of the battle, there was a platoon that was isolated on a hilltop they were surrounded by Japanese forces and they were running low on ammunition. And they sent a plea back to the battalion headquarters asking for more ammunition because they knew when night came, the Japanese would be attacking in force and they were not sure that they could last the night without more ammo. So it turns out that there was a half track parked there and there was an armored ammo trailer attached to it. And so the battalion, the battalion um, commander asked for volunteers. He needed two. One to man the machine gun that was in the turret at the top and one man to drive the half track. So there was a fellow that volunteered to man the gun. And so Austin said, well, I said, I'll drive the half track. So he said the order was that they had to go through a valley in front of them, and then up a winding ridge road that would take them to this hilltop. And he said, we had already called that valley the Valley of the Shadow of Death because the Japanese were in caves and surrounded that valley, and they could shoot right down on you. Now the half-track, of course, was armored. And so he said, they took off and they drove down into the Valley of Death, and he said bullets were pinging off of the half track all over the place. He said the one thing we really feared was that the Japanese had these little trench mortars that they used. And he said we were sitting ducks for a mortar, but evidently they had used up all their, their uh, ammo for the mortars because all they shot at them with was rifles and machine guns. And he said and those bullets thankfully didn't get through the armor. They drove down in through that valley, and then up through that winding road up to the hill, and they came through the valley, and they made it safely to the hilltop. He said, then we spent the night with those guys on the hilltop. And he said, twice during the night the Japanese attacked, but they were able to fend them off. And they finally were relieved by the other Marines sometime around 11 the next morning. But he went through the valley in the shadow of death. In our Psalm 23 today, I'm going to use that as a text today. 
It's a favorite for many of us. I'm thinking a lot of you probably have Psalm 23 memorized. It's because we use it so often, because it speaks to our hearts about us as sheep and a shepherd who leads us. And I have always been of the opinion that the most important word in that whole psalm is this little word, through. Yea, though I walk through the valley. Our Savior Jesus walked through the valley of the shadow of death, and he's promised that he's going to lead you and me through that same valley. And so I want to talk about that word through a little bit today. Now, the truth is, all of us get stuck sometime or another. We get stuck. I saw a YouTube video a while back. It was a video that somebody took on one of these cruise ships, and they had these, this big tubular see-through water, uh, water slide on this cruise ship. And it showed a lady that got into the tube at the top, and she came down the first valley, and then she went up the other side. But for some reason, she didn't have enough momentum coming down. And so she came down into the valley, and she came up the other side, but she didn't make it over the top. She got up about here, then you see her slide back down, and she slides up like this, and she ends up stuck down in the bottom of that valley. Now, I don't know how they got her out of there. Um, I kept waiting for the next person to come sliding down. Pretty soon you had a whole water jam down there. But at any rate, she got down into the valley, and there she was, stuck. Couldn't get herself out. Somebody would have had to have rescued her. We all get stuck at times. It happens to all of us. We get stuck because we're mortal. We're not God. And so we find ourselves in predicaments. We find ourselves in situations that we can't help ourselves. We find ourselves stuck because we're mortal and we are in circumstances sometimes beyond our control. We also get stuck because we're sinful. Because we make decisions, we make choices that are not good for us. Sometimes we follow our heart's desires instead of our mind. Sometimes we make choices that we know are not godly, but they are temptations that we fall for. We also get stuck because we're not very good at seeing the future. How many times have you said or have you had someone say to you, boy, I didn't see that coming. You realize, of course, if there's a hurricane coming, we get six, seven days notice. If there's tornado weather, they've got the Doppler going, you know, and they tell, oh, there's a hook right here, you're in the path, you know, get down to basement. But there is one natural phenomenon for which there's no preparation, and that's an earthquake. And I have seen so many times in people's lives that these earthquakes come. One minute everything is fine, and then the phone rings and you get bad news. One minute you're driving along, listening to your radio, somebody runs a stop sign, bam, you're T-boned, find yourself in an ambulance. One minute everything's fine and then a pain begins to radiate out in your shoulder and down your arm. and You get short of breath and next thing you know you're in the hospital. Those things come, and they come to all of us. And we can't see them coming. We don't know where they are. All at once, they're on us, and we find ourselves in a, a valley. We find ourselves in a low spot. And we realize that we are stuck where we're at. And then we also get stuck sometimes because the world impacts on us. Government makes decisions, family makes decisions, employer makes decisions. You know, you have a job for 23 years and then, and then the company gets bought up and your job becomes expendable. Those things also come at us. And in the middle of all of that, we all know people who are to this day, they're stuck in the valleys. They're in a low spot and they, they can't find a way out and they're, and they're just stuck there. They're just spinning their wheels and can't get out. But the wise ones, 
the wise ones realize that they need help. And what they need is a shepherd. Today's Good Shepherd Sunday. And we think about our Savior Jesus as that good shepherd who laid down his life for the flock, that one who tells us that he's going to bring us through, this one who has already gone ahead of us. And so he says to you and me, go through. In 1989, Becky and I were kids, we lived in Fort Wayne. And her parents lived in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. So Christmas time, we're going to make the trip up to the Upper Peninsula. It's not the best time of the year to visit the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. Um, we actually had a good trip until we came to the spot where the uh, Lake Superior shoreline comes right up against Highway 26. And boy, when we got into there, there was a whiteout going on. The snow was blowing horizontally, and it was so thick you couldn't see 10 yards ahead of the front of the car. And to compound matters, a big gasoline tanker truck had gone into that whiteout just ahead of me. And, and so once we're into it, you can't stop. You dare not stop because somebody will run into you sure as shooting. And so all you can do is just keep inching along, inching along, you know, five, six, seven miles an hour. And every once in a while up ahead of me, I, I, it got thicker. And I, and I always sensed that that was that tanker truck. I couldn't see his lights. I couldn't see him, but I just, he was right up ahead of me. And of course, Becky was yelling, she says, pull over, pull over. And I'm saying, we can't pull over. Somebody will run into us. So you just, you have to go through. You have to push through. And finally, we came out of it on the other side of it. And sure enough, there was a tanker truck just up ahead of me. But we came through to safety. And sometimes that word through is the most important word. I want you to note that in the psalm it says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow. Doesn't say I go into it. Doesn't say I set up camp there. It doesn't say that I'm lost in that valley. It says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. You and I have a promise from the Lord that he's not going to leave us in death. He's not going to leave us in the shadows, but he's going to help us come through. He's going to bring us through. Let's face it. Depression, trouble, sickness, hardship, those things are a fact of life. And they're going to touch all of us in some way at some point, and oftentimes more than once. And when those times come, when those ups and the downs of life hit us, sometimes we feel like we're all alone in this. And we, we don't know how we're going to get out of those things. And when they come to us, then the trouble comes. So one of the things that's really important is that you and I prepare before those times come, that we learn the voice of our shepherd. In that gospel lesson that I said just a minute ago, Jesus talks about that. He says, the sheep know the shepherd's voice. He said, they will not follow the stranger because they don't recognize that voice, but the sheep know that voice and he calls them out by name. And as he calls them, they come and they follow him. They listen to him. Well, that doesn't happen instantaneously. The, shep the sheep know the shepherd's voice because the shepherd has spent time with them and they have spent time with the shepherd. And that's why it's so important for you and me to know and learn the master's voice. So that when those times come, when we find ourselves in those deep spots, when those times of trouble come, that we are able to hear and understand the shepherd's voice. And so we're prepared to follow him, to listen to him. Then when the valley comes, we know his voice. We know his word. We know his promises. And we're sure of his love. Because when those deep spots come, there will always be those times where we wonder, why is God doing this? Has God forgotten me? Does God not love me? 
You hear that in the Psalms. David does it over and over again. Lord, have you forgotten me? Lord, are you angry at me? Lord, why is this? Why are you so slow in helping me? And yet, always, David always ends up too. He stops, collects himself, and then he listens to the voice of his shepherd. And he leads him through. And notice how he leads us through. He says, the, shepherd, the psalmist says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, what? Thy rod and thy staff to comfort me. The rod is God's law. It keeps us in track. It helps us to keep ourselves in check. It tells us how we can serve the Lord, how we can follow him, how best we can look like him. And the staff... The staff is the very thing by which he rescues us. That's the gospel. That's the good news that in Christ Jesus, you and I already have the victory. That God loved us so much that he gave us his one and only son, that in him we might have hope. And so Peter says in our epistle lesson, he says, Jesus entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. You and I, we entrust ourselves into the hands of the one who loved us enough to give us his only son. And in him gives us grace, forgives our sins, and calls us his very own. In fact, knows us by name. At a font like that one, when you were baptized, God took that name and he wrote it in that book of life. He knows you and knows you by name. And then let's be honest, sometimes when we find ourselves in those valleys, it's also an opportunity for us to look at what we've been doing, to ask ourselves, all right, is there something that I've been doing that led me to this place? Sometimes confession is exactly what we need and a change in what we're doing. Sometimes we find ourselves in a falling in a pit and we realize we're in there because of decisions we have made. And so confession, absolution, and a change of heart are also sometimes the way the Lord leads us out of that valley and takes us back to a higher place. And you and I realize that the ultimate valley that we face is the one that comes at the end of our lives. Now, unless the Lord Jesus comes back and comes back soon and come Lord Jesus, you and I all have to face that fact. That day will come when we'll be lying on our deathbed and we will go into the valley of the shadow of death. And then it's especially important, it's especially marvelous that the good shepherd's voice comes to us, that he reminds us that in our baptism we have a promise that that valley isn't the end of things, but he's going to bring us through that valley and back into his light. Jesus said, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. When you and I enter into that valley, we have God's promise. We have Jesus' own word that because he lives, we will live also. And so it's a journey that takes us through a valley, but it leads us back into the light into that light of life. And so as Jesus did on Easter, so he promises you and I will do the same, that death will not hold us, the grave cannot claim us, and that he already has a place prepared for us. And so he says, for thou art with me. See, we don't go through that valley by ourselves. We are never alone when those hard places come, those deep spots that come in our lives. God's word is always, I am with you, and I am with you always to the very end of the age. And so you and I celebrate the fact that even in those dark, shadowed valleys, the Lord's still there with us, his voice calling to us. He calls us to go through, to come on through He's got places there to go for us. And keep in mind, the valleys are the very places that lead us to the green pastures, that coming through those valleys, the Lord already has something marvelous prepared for each and every one of us. And he says, I am with you. 
My mom and dad were in their mid-80s. Mom wasn't doing so well anymore. She slept most of the afternoon, and dad had made it his goal that he was going to get her out of the house and, you know, see if he couldn't pepper up a little bit. And so there was a day right about this time of the year, the end of April, um, mom had slept till about 4.30. Dad had made some supper. They ate supper. And around 6 o'clock, dad said, let's go for a ride. And he said, let's go back and see the woods. Everything was starting to green up. And so they got out into dad's minivan. Dad thought that thing was like a truck. It could go through anything. And so they got into the van. They drove back the lane. And dad saw a hen turkey run into the woods. But mom hadn't seen it. And so dad said to himself, okay, that turkey was headed that way. We'll take the western side of the trail, and that turkey will come, and Ma will see the turkey, right? Great plan, Pa. He drove in there, and he's looking for the turkey, and drove in there, and drove right into a mud, mud spot. And immediately that Dodge van went, Bleh. and there they were, stuck. Nobody knew where they were. My, my brother Kurt lived with them. But Kurt came home, mom and dad are gone. He didn't think much of it. Mom and dad were always gone. They went, played cards. They never told him what their plan was. And so when he went to bed, they weren't back yet, but you know, he didn't think much of it. Mom and dad spent the night in the van in the woods. They had a couple of candy bars because mom was diabetic. Dad always kept a couple in case she went into, you know, needed some sugar. I had a bottle of water lawn that mom had brought, and when it got cold, because it got down to 44 that night, he just turned down the van and turned the heater on, and when it got warm again, he turned it off. And he said, we'll be all right. Dad had knees too bad to try and walk out of there. Mom volunteered to walk out, and he said, no way, I don't need you falling down, and then we'll, we'll be in trouble. We'll be okay. So Kirk got up in the morning, Mom and Dad still weren't back. He had tried to call a couple of times, and Dad had his phone with him, but it was dead battery and no phone charger. So he just it went right to voicemail. So Kurt got ready because he had to go to dialysis, and Kurt came out the door of the, of the house, and he heard something. Beep, 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 beep. Beep, 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 beep. He could hear a horn blowing back in the woods. And he said, as soon as I heard it, I knew who it was. So he got in the car, he drove back the lane. Sure enough, there's mom and dad. And so he had to go to Dallas. So he called my nephew, John, who came over, got a tractor, pulled the car out of the mud. Mom and dad were stuck and they couldn't help themselves. And they had to wait for rescue. And when the rescue came, they pulled them out and they were safe. I called Dad around 10 that day because I got three different messages from my three other siblings. Do you know what our mom and dad did last night? So I called Dad and I said, Dad, are you okay? Oh, yeah. Mom okay? Yeah, she's fine. She's sleeping. I said, what in the world were you thinking? Oh, now you're going to get on me too? And I said, yeah, I am. I said, things could have gone worse. He said, ah. He said, I knew they'd come looking for us. I said, yeah, but, you know, if they found a couple of skeletons in the man, it wouldn't have done us any good. And he, he laughed. He said, they'd have found us before that. But they were stuck. They needed rescue. Sometimes you and I get stuck. Our life, the world, the things that come, the things that we can't foresee, when those things come and we find ourselves in those shadowed valleys, there is always this one voice calling to us. And if we know the master's voice, if we know that shepherd's tone, then we listen and we hear and we are reminded that we're not alone, but we have someone who loves us, who's looking out for our best. And even when we finally enter into that valley of the shadow of death, there too, the good shepherd calls and says, come on through. Amen. Would you please rise? 
And so now may the peace that surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in true faith unto life everlasting. Amen. Congregation may be seated. As we've now been blessed to hear the word of God, we have the opportunity to bring our gifts before the Lord and to lift our voices in offering as well with the King of Love, my shepherd is. invite the congregation to please rise for prayers. Good Shepherd Jesus, as we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, remind us with your shepherd voice that you remain right there with us. Speak to us your calm. Through tribulation and turmoil, make your presence, uh, by your presence, bring confidence and grace to all the weariness that comes. Help us in the places where we get stuck because of our sin, because of things we cannot see coming or control. Lord Jesus, bring us through as your cross and resurrection promise. Bring us your, sh your good shepherd help to believe and to, to push through and to overcome this world. Remind us always that because of your presence, we will reach that other side of the valley. And so, Lord, remind us that because you are for us, nothing can stand against us. We pray, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for those who are sick those who are broken, and those whose lives have been altered and stuck. We pray, Lord, that you be with those like Linda Kidd and Frank Paterka and Jan Durham. We pray for Perry Kraus and for Jean Hadley, for Jill Green and Jeannie Romer, for Jenna Vendeligan, Christine Steinwedel, Kennedy Donnelly, and Pat Franklin. We pray for Leanhart Siebert and Linda Lockman, Marie Timberlake, Donata Owsley, and George Williams. We pray for Bob Erber and John and Teresa Dunlap. Diana Warren and Kathy Rice, Jim Firmer and Sean McGee. Pray for Melvin Jacoby and Gary Sennard, uh, Eddie Morris, Alice Comstock and Linda London Smith. For Myrika Thomas and for Dylan Call, Kathy Litch and Jim Coombs. For Leo, Leola Nichols, for Jimmy Appleby and Sean McNamara. For Jim Potter and Stephen Corner, for Sally Stiff. We pray also for Emma Mattingly, and we pray, Lord, that you would be with all those known only to you as well. In your mercy, bring them healing and wholeness through effective medicine, endurance, strength, patience, and faith to meet each challenge. We pray, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For those who serve in our armed forces and first responders, we pray that you would bless. Bless them especially. Uh, for Alana Warren, Matt McClellan, Kyle Sears, Ben Meredith, Joseph Perturka, Roy Schaefer, and Jessica Christensen. For Michael Kendall and Thomas Kendall, Stephen Hoagland, Lucas Faith, and Jacob Stribe. For Mid Megan Fitzpatrick King, Lauren Mitchell, Carter Whitaker, and Jerry Boyd. For Will Mersman. Grant them strength from, faith, from their faith and wisdom and strength to fulfill their duty to their country and to their Lord. We pray, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. 
Heavenly Father, your word reminds us that all who trust in you will not be put to shame because those who believe in Jesus will share in his resurrection. Let those who mourn believe and trust in you now. And we pray especially for the family and friends of J.C. Walls and for uh, David Swisher and their families, for all who have passed away and those who mourn this, this season. We pray that you'd bless them now, Father, as only you can. We pray, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Finally, we pray for, uh, for what we do as a congregation and thank you for the immeasurable gifts that you bring to each of us. Bless us to appreciate and hold sacred the eternal things that we celebrate in each and every week. Bless us as we continue the search and discussion of our full-time family life director today and in the days ahead. Bless our search team and with wisdom. Bless our confirmands as they round out the year with confessional, uh, confessional Sunday and confirmation itself. And may all, all of us center ourselves on Jesus in our own lives. Help us to honor our Savior by answering his call. Connect, help us to connect with people in their everyday lives, to advance the gospel through God's word and fellowship, to le lend ourselves in service so that we may truly become instruments that lead others to salvation. We pray, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we lift up all for whom we pray now, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who lives and reigns with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We lift our voices with the with Te Deum. pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. With thy spirit. Let us pray together the collect of the day. And we pray. Almighty God, merciful Father, since you have wakened from death the shepherd of your sheep, grant us your Holy Spirit, that when we hear the voice of our shepherd, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with each of you. Amen. You may be seated as we close with our last hymn for this morning, Glorious Day, which will be led by the choir.
God's people said, Amen. Well, as we round out our time together today, just want to share with you some things that are coming up that we want to be aware of and be ready to go for. Uh, lots happening this week, of course. Um, this week, um, on Thursday particularly, a very full day on May 4th. Um, May 4th, we're going up to Orphan Grain Train. Those of you that have clothes, uh, want to bring them in, put them up on the stage, have those ready to go before Thursday, because Thursday morning, they're out. So we're going to take them with us. Um, other things that are going on May 4th, blood drive. So if you want to go up full of clothes, you can come back and, uh, you know, give blood. You know, it'll be a full day, right? Sounds like Maryland's ready. <laughs> okay. Other things going up May 4th. I want to remind you, May 4th is also the National Day of Prayer. And that's, uh, um, they're having a, a prayer at Salvation Army on Thursday. You don't want to miss that if you're able to make it. Um, certainly, uh, we invite everyone to be part of that. So all of those things are happening on May 4th. Uh, that's Thursday. Also coming up, um, we want to remind you that uh, there is an important um, uh, concert that's coming up, May 13th. Uh, is that right, uh, May 13th? Yeah, two grand. That's at the Watkins United Methodist Church in Louisville. Uh, our friend over here, Jess, and, and uh, she's one grand, right? <laughs> You're one. And the, what's the fellow's name? Does this? Chris is the second grand. So two grand pianos playing together. Wonderful. Uh, we invite everyone to be in that. That's, uh, of course, 13th. That's at 2 o'clock. Uh, other things coming up. Uh, voters' Assembly. or have a special Voters' Assembly on May 14th. May 14th is also going to be a busy Sunday. Uh, the reason for that special Voters' Assembly uh, is... Uh, because of the, um, uh, to establish the full-time position, the, the family life minister, family life director, and to hash that out and formalize that as a congregation. And so that'll be presented between the services uh, on that particular Sunday. That is the only item on the agenda. Uh, also coming up on the 14th, our grads, some of you may be listening now, some of our high school grads will be honoring them that Sunday at 1030. And certainly, if you're listening, we need a picture, a baby picture, confirmation picture, and a graduation picture. And we need that as soon as possible, preferably. So please send us that. Uh, so those are also coming up uh, the 14th. And there's something else going on the 14th. Uh, what would that be? Uh, Mother's yeah, Mother's Day. I don't want to miss that. So, yeah. Okay. And the flower sale, just this, this just in. Um, pick up your flowers uh, Tuesday or Wednesday, May 2nd or 3rd this week. That would be Tuesday or Wednesday. Uh, and you can call the school office if you don't, um, you don't know what to do there. So uh, between 11.30, 12.30, and 2.30 and 5 o'clock, uh, those are the pickup times Tuesday and Wednesday. So please pick up your flowers then. One last thing that I have that I want to share with you is that starting on the 2nd uh, this week, uh, on Tuesday, we're going to have, they're going to be welcoming work teams to come out to the, the lodge out at uh, Cedar Brook, Camp, Lakeview Springs now. They're remodeling the whole thing. They're going to be adding actually a bathroom onto it and a number of different things, but they've got to tear back a lot of the old stuff, you know, take out some of the old stuff. So if you have tools uh, and you have, a, have the time and the interest, uh, we could certainly use your help uh, beginning on Tuesday. So all right, Pastor, did I miss anything? Yep, you, next weekend is bring your can to church yes, weekend you. so you can bring food in for the food pantry, and mm -hmm. uh, we appreciate that. Okay, very good. That's it. All right. Blessings on your week. We'll greet you at the door.